Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. Jonathan Byer. So you just went to the International de France. As, mm -hmm. how, how do we say it? You went to Grenoble. International. Yeah. International. <laughs> how do you pronounce Grenoble in the French, you know? Grenoble. Grenoble. <laughs> um, it was very pretty. Very it was pretty. like, see, but like it's all alpine and you could feel the presence of 1964 Peggy Fleming all around. It was really exciting. <laughs> You felt the chartreuse. Did you did you have any chartreuse liqueur while you were there? I did not, but you know the tram system there, it's all chartreuse on the inside. I'm assuming an obvious ode to Peggy. <laughs> yes. Oh, so, Jonathan, how was the event? I mean, I, I saw that you were there. You did a little I tweeting. Did. Meeting, I did a little tweeting. Meeting the real, um, the real nature of, of the people in skating. So I, I think it was interesting. Yes. Uh, so just a little quick run. Now, I was excited to go. I didn't think I was going to be able to because I had a rehearsal on Friday and then I was off on Saturday. So I immediately like used all my miles and just flew on down there. It's a little annoying to get to. Mm -hmm. It's their version of Lake Placid, right? Oh. I had to take like a million trains and planes to get to it. And the rink was very small. Mm. That was like something I... I mean, I'm sure there's regulations yeah. to the size of the ice surface, but it was a very intimate feeling. It felt like a practice rink, and I really enjoyed that. And there, obviously, you could tell there weren't too many people there. Mm -hmm. So the seats were, like, easy to navigate and all this sorts of stuff. It didn't end great for me, the event. I had a slight altercation with a coach and a choreographer, uh, but since I had so many books last time, I have this little book, and it's called... Mindfulness for beginners. <laughs> With all of my inner peace and wonderfulness, I can now say I'm assuming that this outcry was not about me. It was about something that was going on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I guess we can just leave it at that. Uh, you know, I wanted to, um, when, when you tweeted that, I was like, well, I can't say me too, because that has a different connotation. But let's okay. just say that... <laughs> Been, been there, there. Um, and as many other people have, I was getting messages, lots of support for you. Even many of your um, Canadians who get very upset with you because you like the French ice dancers were then saying, oh no, you, you, you can't, uh, Jonathan, no, this is... Well, it's, a tricky, it's a tricky world if you feel like you cannot <clears throat> have a show like this. And I think what you created with TSL has brought a whole separate channel of fans. You know, we were talking like... I think some of the people who enjoy perhaps Ice Talk or used to listen to um, the Manly Woman skate cast, they're all different, you know, facets of skating fans. And um, you've built a show that attracts a certain kind of skating fan that really appreciates this format and this venue. And it may not be to everyone's taste, but it is certainly to many people's taste. And um, <laughs> I've really felt the love on Twitter. I thought that was, it was, it was really genuine. touching. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that, that meant a lot to me and I really appreciated it. The funny thing is, is that so many skaters reached out and were like, things are said, what did he ever say that was so bad? In rinks, things are 10,000 times worse that are said, or I've heard that same person say something 10,000 yeah. times worse. So I think that's interesting too, is that a lot of times on social media, it's a lot of the fans who may have pictures of these skaters as profile pictures and you have to remember that this is not all kumbaya i think the thing that's interesting about skating since we've done this that i've really thought about a long time is that now that skating has really fallen from the mainstream there's a difference in culture right mm -hmm. when in uh, <clears throat> when you go to japan or you know in the u.s is that if you want skating to be a taken seriously as a real sport and it's an, and it is an athletic event you know, these mm -hmm. people want to always be said about how hard people are working, and I think that that's very true. And uh, you've great. worked hard, yeah, hard in your life, and, you know, right. I, I would say that I have worked hard at, you know. Uh, they do not understand that it comes with territory that when you, the more notoriety you get, it's no longer just going to be the people at Friends of Figure Skating handing you flowers and telling you how great you are and how beautiful. And there's a place for that. Yes. But and that is that is friends of figure skating yes. and it does attract a certain crowd and it does it is wonderful and it is but... wonderful that they get to meet people and interact and have their moment and that is great there's an other side to that you know I don't think any football player you know 
and right. it, it, it's the higher you get up because people will say, well, there's not the same money. Well, people do start to make a lot of money. And then there's a lot of control here. There's a lot of things going on. So yeah, I course. would just say that um, look at the results of the last two competitions. Look at the results of sectionals for any of the junior ladies in Midwest. And you can really put things into perspective of know what kind of headspace um, people Perspective, are in. I think, is ideal. You know, <laughs> and, and it, you try to silence any conversation about it. Like, I have to tell you, Dave, myself included, TSL and this format, it has brought so many people mm -hmm. back to skating. I had f kind of fallen out of it until I stumbled on you and Jenny interviewing Frank Carroll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it brought me back. It taught so many people IJS. It taught mm -hmm. so many people so many things. And well, I think you've it's- You've really I added to it, giving people music lessons and perspective of an artistic. And that's why I really enjoy speaking with you too. It's not just- <laughs> You know, what a love just... fest we're having, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say is that, uh, you know, I had someone who I co-hosted with who had enough of skating, not once but, but twice, yeah. and just exited stage left the first time, like, no warning, didn't see it coming, second time, saw it coming, uh, mm -hmm. and you came in, no questions asked. So just these... It's a labor of love, and I'm very happy to do it, Dave. You've been wonderful. So let's talk about Grenoble, all right? Yes. Or, yes. I'm not Grenoble. <laughs> okay. I'm not majoring in French anytime soon. Uh, so let's start with uh, the ladies' event, which you, you got there for the I first did. time. Um, so seeing them in person, you had a lot of the key Olympic players here. Uh, Caitlin Osmond, who's obviously one of the front runners. Mm -hmm. uh, you had uh, Alina Zagitova. Uh -huh. who, she's an interesting character now because several times this season now she has bombed the short and then come back with a very strong long program. Yeah. Which is an so, interesting so let me, thing. Let me ask you this, Dave. <clears throat> Three short programs in a row have not gone her way. Mm -hmm. But obviously this long program is great. So then I wondered, we talked about on one episode, if we thought that backloading somehow helped her, that it was just like, now we're only focusing on jumps, mm -hmm. or is it that it's a repeat? <clears throat> that she's just more comfortable in the piece? Like, I thought that the first time I saw the short, I was like, oh, she's it's new territory. Um, but then by the third one, you're like, I don't know what's going on here. So this is interesting because... There are typically a couple of things I think you see over time when you see multiple sports and watch people train, watch people compete, think about their history, is that she was very successful last year. Mm -hmm. um, and then she has taken the same program and you know added music to it um, and altered it a little bit and doing this in the, in the senior ranks and it's been very, very uh, competitive. And I think Charlie White made an interesting... Uh, observation or comment about dance and I think it's you know probably a little different in the ladies because people in dance team up so much later but he said that going from the junior grand prix is like having a really intense hobby and when you go to the senior grand prix it's like competing against people where this is their job to win and oh this that's is a really interesting way to say that yeah that is I, I totally get that so I think okay. when people talk about people adjusting to the senior ranks, and someone like Zagitova is being, she is, has been a very strong competitor. She's mm -hmm. someone who is very talented, and she's a fighter. But perhaps with her, they, is a nerve issue, where she is dealing with being an Olympic contender. She's dealing with being an incredibly strong, you know, country. And it probably right. does help her, hurt her, um, at the same time. Point to come from behind because then she gets in her real fighter mentality. I think the okay. short program can be hard for certain types when maybe the nerves get to them more because they don't, if they, someone like Ashley loves to come from behind. If she's a little bit down, that can rile her up and make her aggressive. And maybe this helps Zagitova a little bit. The other thing you can look at is that perhaps this short program is not working for her. It could be the vibe, it could be the music, it could be a little fast. There could be something in there that is not working. It's not jiving, yeah. And, and I, I actually almost preferred her junior short program. Okay. I wouldn't be completely offended. I got everyone else is doing it yeah. <laughs> if, if she went back. Or just um, something generic. Or Yeah. Yeah. I think with her, I would look at why is the, I'm sure her team is, looking at why is the short program... Uh, the problem, especially because Jonathan, I don't know, 
I'm really feeling like she is the one to look for to win the Olympic Games. And, the and then I have to look differently. So first, my, my gut reaction to seeing her live was like, oh, I... I don't mind this like I thought I might have. Mm -hmm. um, it, there was kind of a lack of ice coverage mm -hmm. that I sort of noticed in person, okay. I felt. Um, but really, I was kind of like into it in general. And sometimes she finishes the moves in the beginning of the long, especially. And then sometimes she doesn't. So there's like total inconsistency, but but it's she's clearly capable of it. But that's me viewing a really strong... Mm -hmm girl on her senior debut. If now I'm supposed to look at her like she's going to be the Olympic gold medalist, mm -hmm. my taste gets a little different. So for me, I know that there's a reverence in Russia for the ballet, and it's interesting is that when they put on the tutu, they tend not to criticize the ballet positions. They say, oh, she's a wonderful Kitri young girl. Um, yeah. I, I continually feel that when you put on a tutu, you know, there's two, there's a games, and I know that they were talking about this in Eurosport, that this is a strategy, and perhaps this will make people feel about her one way, that she's artistic, and mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk, because everyone in, selling, in skating is strategizing and packaging, and this is a game uh, yeah. that you are playing with the judges. I am the opposite, and I am, if you have a nine-judge panel, I'm that judge that's saying, you're putting yourself, you're setting yourself up to be compared to a great ballerina. And right. to me, I don't feel like you're giving that. To me, I'm seeing some more juniorish moments. But that being said, when she does do her combination, the triple triple with the loop on the back end, that's a fantastic um, achievement. When she does a real rip on jump and gets some real height where both arms are overhead, I'm drawn to her. There's something about yeah. her that seems tough as nails in the free skate where yeah. she can come back and doesn't wilt. Obviously, they have to figure out what's going on in the short program. Are they going right. to change it? Are they going to keep it? She doesn't have a lot of time to figure it out because if you think about her schedule, she has two, uh, three weeks uh, until the Grand Prix final, so probably not going to get a, a new program for them. Then she has about two weeks-ish to Nationals, get ready for yeah. Russian Nationals. So yeah. her season is so far into the motions where... Right. And you have to think about psychologically, she's a couple of weeks ahead of the rest of the skaters who in the U.S., they're, they're early January, you know, get, right. getting ready for the Olympics. So they're there. She has to be ready over Christmas here. That's quicker. You know, she And then is, turn it right around for Europeans, yeah. which they'll all do, versus sometimes our team won't do four continents. You yeah. know what I mean? It just seems a different priority. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting. But it was... now. Because I liked Paulina T, mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, I liked her technique with her legs, mm -hmm. these big, like, beautiful jumps. And I, I would love to see her in person, actually, because you yeah. know those jumps are pretty exciting. And we were talking about Radionova's kind of this shoulder mm -hmm. action. How do you find Zagitova's? I've never seen Zagitova in person, so that's, it's hard to say. You know, that's... I didn't mind it in the program. But if she was, like, marking her jumps, like, you know, kind of walking through it, like, at the side mm -hmm. uh, before they all went on for the warm-up, she was, like, practicing, like, she was about to jump, like, Radionova, unless she was just loosening them up so that they went down. But I was completely fascinated by that, and I was like, wait a minute, is she going to jump entirely like this? And then she didn't, so I was curious what that was all about. That could be a drill of some sort, yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I think is interesting, you talk about Radionova, is that... She has a lot of personality, and I've never felt like, you know, Dick Button once referred to her as a fugitive from the worst of the child pageants when she had that dancey. Oh thing. yeah, remember when she That's came when on? We, this... we saw her at that Skate America in two thousand thirteen. Yeah, and she yeah. was just um, there was something fantastic about her. It was tacky, but it was wonderful at the same time, and yeah. it was just it was possessed. genuine in its own way. Yeah. There was something great about it, and I was uh, messaging with a couple people. Um, I went down a rabbit hole this week and was watching some of the 94 Olympics uh, after seeing I, Tanya. and I think the one thing that I really think that is missing from the current skating is that each person, if you watch that last group, or the, the really interesting skaters who you remember, were all uniquely individual in their own way, and because of the right. current rules, you can't do that as much. Right. You can't do that. Uh, 
and they were each uniquely different. And maybe their programs did need some more stuff in there and there should have been more criteria. But I think what was so wonderful is that you could take the personality of Rydia Nova and that would be Rydia Nova from year to year. Right. And she would be that pizzazzy kind of person or dramatic. Mm -hmm. or, and because they've kind of put her with some old standards and given her the violin, it's kind of made her more generic to where she used yeah. to have this unique identity. A spark. Yeah. 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 So that's why. Zakitva is, is where hers read as sassy and showbiz. Mm -hmm. Zakitva reads as very intense. Yes. She creates an intense energy in that arena. And you were like, oh gosh, here it comes, you know. So, and it's it's exciting. I, one of the things I've heard is the competition in Terry's rink is absolutely um, out of this world. As a young, there are things where, you know, it's been said that if you don't get your double axle by a certain age in Russia, you will no longer be coached. Um, yeah. There is, apparently, when they have tryouts, there are lines around uh, the block to work with uh, this team. And it's a very cutthroat mentality there. But yeah. obviously, you see the results, it, the competition and the results it's produced. Uh, it is, I'm sure, very difficult, uh, very stressful uh, mm -hmm. for these young ladies to deal with. And at the same time, there are benefits to that. I still look at her as someone who could be... Um, she just has that right quality for the Olympics where she is oh, yeah. a little bit young. Oh, yeah. A little, you know, Sandra says that the Olympics favor the naive. She is just a little bit young, a little bit of the mm -hmm. underdog, and she's coming, you know, and she yeah. probably competes with that Medvedeva every day. So it's just right. more of the same. Um, yeah, exactly. It, I, I imagine it must be really interesting in that rink uh, to watch clean program after clean program after clean program with the arm with the end right. I find that I don't love the Anna Karenina program I don't love the music I, I saw that movie in theaters and thought that the soundtrack was so subpar I thought the movie was subpar but I thought that the soundtrack was actually subpar too I think. you know they wrote an opera and it was also subpar. <laughs> okay. But yeah. I just think for such a classic Russian novel you would yeah. I would really you know you want the full Effect, a yeah. fact of yeah. the real epic music, and I didn't, I didn't get that. I, I, I wanted a Doctor Zhivago for the ages with Anna Karenina. Yes, and, yes, and this is, uh, and Medvedevus is a bit goth. The it's overall goth appearance, Anna yes, yeah, it's like it needs like joy, not like Johnny for Fredericks of Hollywood or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I just, I, I think she's a, she's a fighter. She's, a, she's that little Tara Lipinski thing in her. She's, um. She's coming. That Zagita yeah. doesn't think she's second to anyone. I, I like that quality. It's um, it's it's the same quality that makes someone annoying that makes them great at the same time. So exactly, exactly. And so we'll, I'll be interested. They strategize well there. Yeah. So now that they've been presented with, you know, kind of a dilemma with what to do about the short program results, let's see let's see what they come up with. Oh, so she you... and Danny look so good in that kiss and cry. Yeah. It is. Ridiculous. Did you like her like vibe at the event? Like, where did you get your jacket? <laughs> did you like a Terry's vibe at the event? Yes. It was, it read as class. It read as calm and collected. Mm -hmm. You know, even when, uh, you know, there were errors happening. When was she, oh, for the men, <clears throat> when the Georgian guy was falling. She was just kind of like, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> But it was it was Danny who was a little more animated watching the skaters. Actually, yeah, yeah. it's fun. Yeah, that, and I like that. Um, you can really tell. One thing I love about Mark Hanretti is that he is someone who does his homework. He is not phoning it in. So he no. started there. I know that there was a big video mm. about uh, Medvedeva and you know the debate about the pre rotations and you know yeah. a lot of judges uh, were weighing in on this and talking about how this happens in all jumps, but. I noticed that when he was doing that, when Mark Henry was doing the slow mo on Zagitova, he did reference pre rotations, and I thought, oh, I bet he saw that video last week. He uh, did his homework. Yeah, he did his exactly. homework, which I what, respect. Such friends. Yeah. Please don't tell me how old they are and what yeah. their favorite puppy is. Like, I yeah, let's talk about pre rotation. Let's talk about it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I actually thought he was fantastic uh, in the ice dance commentary this week. Is that he mm -hmm. really? Um, Listening to him and Charlie, I felt like it gained a lot. Charlie, I find, has some real opinions, and then he tries to dial it back. I think we know from Twitter that Charlie has a lot of set point of views. Um, and, and I don't, again, I think, you know, in Eurosport, they're like, give it the analysis. Let's mm -hmm. learn. Let's understand. 
I, they must be told to keep it light. Mm-hmm. They, they must be instructed. Even like Tracy Wilson, I, I saw something that she was commentating on, um, on the Olympic Channel for the shorts. Mm-hmm. And she was holding back. She holds back, but with Tracy, you have to read between the lines. Bruno yeah. Marcot actually taught me this with Tracy. He says, remember, she's commentating, and like Sandra in the 90s, people she works with are uh, skating. Obviously, and the other thing is that everyone in skating is friendly, so they can't be too... Na- As you learned, when you say things, people will come for you, right? Yeah. So Tracy does a fine line. She'll always be positive, but she'll be more positive about certain people. And I noticed that she really did not like the Russian uh, free skate to uh, Candyman. And she was trying to say it in the nicest way. I think they're fantastic, but could be more fantastic. And I find that maybe this isn't the right vehicle to bring out their wonderful talent. Like she was trying to tell you that this program is horrible and and trying to... (laughs) She's so skilled that Tracy Wilson. She has come yeah. such a long well, way since ninety two, and it's um, their Vern Lundquist, the Canadian <laughs> Vern Lundquist. That's my favorite new term. Mm-hmm. Um, they were watching um, Luba and Dylan, mm-hmm. and he was like, "And they're ranked number two, right behind Eric and uh, Megan. So they'll for sure be at the Olympics." And Tracy was like, "Oh, oh, not so well. Hold on." <laughs> There's a lot of debate about that because at the rankings, she she, like kind of put her foot in and be like, "Well, let's let's not get carried away. We don't know yet." And that's interesting because she coaches. You know, she's involved in that team. They're at the cricket club, and yeah, Tracy's apparently like the real manager brains of that organization. She, I've always liked her. Yeah, there's something about her. It's it's funny. She apparently is a really disciplined organized. You could tell she had that creative partner and she was the she was the steady the the yeah, marta exactly. <laughs> uh, oh speaking of marta did you see the gymnasts tweeting each other talk about the fight never being what the fight was about that was yeah. interesting too there is just months and years of yeah. bad blood there these, these girls just need to take a second before they just tweet something out <laughs> that was that was that was unfortunate. That I was like unfortunate. that Simone knows that she wields the power and can just shut anything down. I like that about Simone. She's yeah. just As we say in Germany, Mikroport untergefallen. <laughs> I don't she just dropped that mic and walked out with that tweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's not the first time that she has let it yeah. go about Gabby cuz remember okay. when you're an Olympic team, you you sell an image, you know that you're the yeah. five and you're the team members and you know, they'd be what at- you stand for as a, as a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after Gabby was no longer the beloved, you know, young starlet of the Olympics, she didn't show up to events if she didn't feel like it. Yeah. Or if there's negotiations going on behind the scenes. <laughs> or the mom, you know, maybe the mom was saying, don't go to this. You know, there's a lot yeah. going on here business-wise. And um, yeah. there were tour you stops. Let's bring out some weird traits in everyone. There were tour stops where Gabby wasn't there and Simone didn't like that. You know, that yeah, she was then I doing more. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> it's great. There are sides and there are fat. Look, all these people need a reality show. Uh, what did you think of Sutskova in person? You know, you talk about Paulina T. I know that you're a fan. You're a real fan. So I'm the one. I'm the fan. <laughs> yes. I'm owning it. I'm owning it. Guess what? Right. I liked it even better in person. <laughs> really? Okay. I, I Again, I know that, like, she's not everybody's cup of tea. But what I'm beginning to learn is... I'm 6'5", mm-hmm. and my whole family's tall. I'm watching out for the tall ones. Mm-hmm. She looks like a giraffe. Her skates were so enormous compared to everyone else's on, like, the warm-up. It looked like clown shoes. I was mm-hmm. like, she's literally, like, a totally different breed of mm-hmm. person next to some of these, like, my Mihara. Like, she practically ran past me and was, like, not up to my waist. Like, it was, you know, crazy when you see some of these people in person. I liked the jumps in person. And I do understand the argument. Some people claim that there's a snoozy quality, mm-hmm. a, a potentially generically lovely quality. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but in person, I enjoyed said, you know, generically lovely quality. But mm-hmm. the jumps, the jumps were good. Again, there's much commentary now that she's added the hand, mm-hmm. but she's getting her points. But it really is um, not a pleasing aesthetic. <laughs> It, it detracts from from the jumps. I, I would like that to, to go away. In the, uh... Yeah. We could put a rule on how many times you I can would like it, it to be a highlight and not, yeah. um, and not right. look like an algebra uh, assessment. Yeah. <laughs> and she has her, like, 
like a like she's doing a mohawk or something like on her head. It's it's an unusual way to do it. So we also had the two-time winner of the Sasha Cohen Trophy on uh, the TSL Fantasy, uh, which was um, Caitlin Osman. And what did you think of her in person? Because thinking back to those nineties, you the- saw her in Boston, yes? No, she was not there in Boston. Remember? Well, that was the injured one, of course. Okay, but she I was think- third at their nationals that year and did not uh, compete. Okay, this was the first time I saw her live. She's powerful, and- correct? Very powerful. And you know what? It comes from her center. Mm -hmm. Her core is so strong. Like, you just know with one glide, whoop, she's at the other end of the arena. Like, the Mm -hmm. ice coverage isn't, like, let me see what else I wrote down here. Um, But when the... When the jumps faltered, it it was uncomfortable. She has a, a, a unique ability. She's great, and the jumps are big in the air, but her air position doesn't lend herself to always be super consistent. I noticed in the slow-mos during Sochi, they were showing, and you could see her body start to slip. You know like when you see Tanya in that triple axel, and you start to see her tilting? Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. Osman used to have that quality. And I noticed on the landings, it's very Shoma Uno a little bit, where you don't trust her to be able to control it. Right. I think um, I thought the triple loop uh, mistake was surprising. Um, yeah, there's there's something with her that's she has so much talent, but I uh... well because even though the short, even though she did win the short, obviously it was riddled with errors. Someone even gave her like a positive goe on the lots with the hand down and stuff. I was like, all right, you guys. Um, the problem is I. It's hard for me to root for skaters. Mm -hmm. I've rooted for skaters in the past. We've all been devastated in the past, you know, when you start to root and invest too much. And she's the kind of skater I'm kind of starting to root for too much. Mm. And it stresses me out. (laughs) Like, I would love to see her just really deliver. I don't quite understand the program, especially in person. I was like, I I don't get what you want me to take away from it as an audience member. With the mood, with the vibe, with the story, whatever it was, it just wasn't really coming across. And uh, Zagitova made sure that she was seen when she came right down in the stands and sat in like the second row to watch it. Very I was like, Katerina. Oh, hey, yeah. Katerina. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Yeah, I think Osman, I wonder in Canada, maybe it's with the depth and the fact that they do more disciplines. I wonder if, and maybe it's cultural, but they don't seem to spar with each other perhaps in the same way they don't celebrate the rivalries in the, in the same way I wonder yeah. if she and Gabby Daleman were really knocking heads Got for years day. how that would impact things uh, more you to know? have that Zagitova intensity yeah. she did not skate out with that fire underneath it because there have been many many Canadian ladies through the years who could do a short program and then they do with Jose Schwinnard uh, the free so, right well or Jose Schwinnard the short let's be honest yeah <laughs> But, you but, know, it took Joanne many years to figure yeah. out whatever it took. Um, so it's, it, that's right. interesting, too, that Osmond seems to be on that trajectory, and she seems to be figuring it out, but then in the free skate, not figuring out so much. Yeah. So I don't trust her uh, in the free skate yes. ever. I never yeah. go with her for my fantasy pick, I, okay. unless it's in Canada. For the short. For the short, I did get that one oh, right. Oh, always. Well, only because I knew Zagitova was having a tendency to fault her. In the short, was I able to do that? And Osmond short is really uh, fantastic, I think. So, what else? Pauline Edmonds, what did you think? This is a video, it's geo-blocked because of the, the music, which I mm-hmm. she's probably happy about. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it was the greatest performance. Um, yeah, um, again, she's another one. I like her so much as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, I feel like she's she's self-aware. Mm-hmm. There, And you know what? So is the mom. Mm. Uh, when they were sitting in the kiss and cry for the short, and they were like, season's best. Now, this, no, whatever you thought about Paulina, or, you know, mm-hmm. sketchy landings or snoozy skating, she was competitive in her material. You know, her mm-hmm. shorts were triple loss, triple toe, triple flip. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew what good scores were mm-hmm. supposed to be and that she had received. She sat in the kiss and cry with her mom, and she was like, oh, yeah, oh, season's best. <laughs> like, like, they're kind of, in a weird way, I think they're just owning, they were like, we committed to this, we tried it. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know how and if they continue. Do you think they go? I think she goes season. to nationals, because I think you have to. You just have to finish it out. Yeah? But I okay. think, like, Patrick Chan, it's one of those things where you got to finish this out, and it's hard. It's hard to... Yeah, um... I always wonder. But, yeah, I was like, there was obviously much improvement 
mm-hmm. from Finlandia. <laughs> it's a she positive. She has improved. That's yeah. <clears throat> Um, and I still think when she opens that long to that dreadful music, uh, that she has a nice deportment, like her shoulders look nice in those opening movements. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm, I like you and I want you to do well, but I just don't understand technically how this can happen. Now, I don't you, know. When you were watching Lorene, you know, when we made a comment about, um, that in the light of everything that's going on, when a girl is skating to like, um, Something, something, love, daddy. I'm, I'm blanking on the title. Uh, the Marilyn Monroe about, you know. Love. I'm just going to drink this Sprite Zero for a moment. <laughs> Did you notice that that music was suddenly missing? Because I got a, a message from someone after that that I didn't respond to. But then it was changed. Well, they still did the Lolita part. The Lolita there, part was gone. Yeah. Look, no, well, there was a mention of Lolita. But the daddy part was. Yeah, changed. I think now that part, I mean. There were a couple in the event in general, he said, trying to avoid the topic at all costs. Um, Like, there were some such funny musical choices and moments that actually the audience was guffawing. Yes. Well, I always find the the Great Gatsby to be so interesting. We've never seen a great edit, even though it's... It should be great for skating, and it doesn't seem to work or translate well, and the edits are always too jarring, and... Yeah. Because I think... I get why it should work, but it doesn't. The film was a cluster, too. The film was strange. I think if you picked one song, maybe it would be good, but trying to... They're such different uh, temperaments to the music that they don't really blend together, and it's jarring uh, that... But the Beyonce, when they say the, you love blow and I love puff, and I was like... (laughs) Oh, dear. Oh, dear. (laughs) So there's that choice happening. But the other interesting thing with the music here is how they're choosing the actual sound levels. Mm. So, like, for instance, in our French Girls program, (laughs) the... There's a compilation of of songs. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> some are older older recorded torch songs. Mm-hmm. Some are more current versions, and the volume changes drastically on mm. them. I don't mean within the context of a piece. I mean the actual pieces themselves. And then when certain people came out, like uh, Elisabetta, mm-hmm. those volumes are up. Mm-hmm. Her music was loud, and you immediately, as an audience member, you wake up. I mean, unfortunately, it didn't go great for her, but you you wake up and pay attention. And when some of these big pieces of music are almost slightly muted, Mm. this happened to Mai also. It was like you wanted to turn the volume a little bit because it it automatically you started off at an energy disadvantage because it seemed dull. What's weird to me about Lorene is that last year she was... She was a novelty act, and we paid attention to her because she was memorable and that she had the costume change, but she was able to land more of the jumps. You know, it's like she went from Mariah Bell Titanic to Mariah Bell doing the double toes at Nationals, and it happened. Um, it's, it's There's been a deterioration there, so it's interesting. If she will make the... I'm curious if she'll make the Olympics now against, you know, May Bernice. She was certainly favored, too. Well, May in person mm-hmm. is a force. I, I Now, I, I don't know if she thought the costume gimmick would work for her then this year. Oh, how was the gimmick in the free? The uh... awkward. awkward. Yeah. It felt, it felt like a talent show. Mm. And she's better than that. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't... Well, I mean, hold on. <laughs> in any case, I think she did not need that. It, it works like it's a cute thing for an exhibition or something, but really... It took time. Maybe that's her. Maybe that's her covering up her smoke break. Yeah, I find that the music. The more I watch this this season and last season, I feel like when they, the lyrics were first allowed in, it really. It, I thought that it did enhance skating in some ways. When you have like a moment like Joshua Ferris, uh, where that really worked, you know. Yeah. I find that the lyrics seem to confuse the music choice even more. It seems with more options. <laughs> The choreographer well, becomes clearer when the edits are goofy. Yes, for sure. When you're following the actual thing, and then it, it does become different as we look. When you judge PCS and you're looking at interpretation, you are looking how that person interprets the music. So now you have the music as it is on the page. Mm-hmm. Then the person performing the music 
has already done an interpretive job of what was on the page. And then you have a singer on top of whatever that accompaniment is. So you're dealing with three things and sometimes it gets a little lost. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was on customer service with Lufthansa. <laughs> and you know, you, you know how you can tell when you call customer service and they're reading the prompt? Oh, absolutely. And they're like, thank you for your call. Yes, I can help you with that. And this you're call like, may be recorded or monitored. Yeah, for quality assurance purposes. So, but you can tell when they're reading and when they're just speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And a couple of these lyrics, I feel like they're just like going through the motions, mm -hmm. right? They're doing the prompts instead mm -hmm. of, and that's what I think about the sign language um, choreography to the music as well, to the lyrics specifically. Now, being there for the ice dance, what did you make of the French Weaver and Poget, Stepana van Buchen's Liebestrom, uh, and so I found the second to last group to be almost unwatchable. I woke up early. I put it on. It was home. tough. That that one was tough. There were so many bad choices and phoned in things. Um, so let's just focus on the final group. Let's let's. Great. Yeah. I think that's wise. Yeah. Um, I, I would say the, the the second to last group wasn't ready for prime time yet. Let's just. That's yes. <clears throat> I agree. It was an unusual collection of skaters, but so we can leave it. In the in the last group, seeing let's let's start with Imagine. Because you were just talking about singers and music. That it, was okay, that was one where mm -hmm. everyone in the arena giggled. I and I understand when I understand they wanted a, mm -hmm. a female voice or it was all explained in the article. Mm -hmm. And that's great. You can have outstanding intentions. But in person, the quality of the voice, the way it was placed into the music, the matching steps, it, it got a it got a giggly reaction from not just the music guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like everyone was a little like, oh, oh gosh, what's happening now? And they went after the French. Mm hmm. Um, which was not only tough because of the response, but it was also tough in the comparison. Yeah, that that was tricky, and they're they're in a bit of trouble. So here's what uh, I want to say about Imagine, because I don't think it utilizes Madison's performative skills, her performance skills. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it has that quality. I agree. And the other thing about Imagine is because these skaters are more sheltered and they're so young, and and this song is about deep things, right? It brings me back to my parents still to this day watch all of the singing shows, although they've decided that The Voice is really where it's at. And I was saying, okay. well, who won The Voice last year? I don't know, but that Adam is great. And we're, right. So back when it was still about the singers on American right. Idol and my mom was watching that show, um, as she reads and does her words with friends, she used to, you know, used to hear it and I would be doing my, like, sit-ups and stuff, you know, and would... And I remember when Cara DiGuardi was on, and they, they, she was a producer, and they would go to do Imagine, and, and not that she's some great songwriter, but uh, she's written things that have sold, and not that she's some artist, but when it got to Imagine, by this point in the show, she would be like, can you just stop? You're like 22. Do you know what you're singing about? Yeah. And there's no need for this cover. This is one of those songs where it doesn't, it doesn't elevate you to, to cover this song. It's we don't yeah we don't necessarily need to hear or see your version of this yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah so and I'm confused that this is Christopher Dean's work because obviously everyone is so reverent he will go down as um, obviously the whole you know the God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit right. Christopher Dean in Ice Dance is how he is uh, referenced right why did we make this a uh, you know, a duet. And then... Well, I mean, and is it generically world peace? Or, you know what I mean? Like, again, what Madison may lack in certain areas, she does have in spades in performance quality. Yeah. So um, there's a, there was a much more effective... It could have still been Beatle. <laughs> this is really, you know, and I've, I've talked to people that have ice danced before, and they always said, well, Igor is great at putting together steps, but Marina really needed to guide the artistic vision. That was really her gift. I, I think that's that's clear now. People say that she kind of direct, you know, took away his tackier impulses. And I, I find that his skaters don't have a, an artistic voice with, 
you know, Adrian being with him, who's his, you know, girlfriend, they don't seem to have a person that's really directing it stylistically right. and as because also if you know what is working for the canadians is a return to an old program so mm -hmm. i i wonder if a return to a program is coming for chalk and Bates. but then the question is i don't i can't say that they've necessarily had a landmark free skate in which to go back to i would say last year's was the best that they've ever done okay i find that they've always really struggled um artistically with Mm. And ever, well, they've always gone the Eagle route. And since they've teamed up, it's really been a struggle for them. I found that they cut away whatever voice and style they have with Les Miserables, which was really awkward and kind of skated them. And uh, right. a lot of their choices have not been... A lot of their choices make me feel that they're not steering the artistic direction of their career. And yes. maybe they don't know something to them they yeah. were they didn't have to skate this per, yeah. per se yeah even if they have to say that they did <laughs> but yeah um it's it's strange because she didn't have with with her former partner greg she really though they did that phantom of the opera before marilyn charlie did it she she did a good job there there was a it was it didn't feel mismatched so that's right. uh interesting yeah. in my thought mark and ready really and you could see it after the French, is when you watch the run of the edge and they just do not cover the ice. And you know how the French seem to like hum and float and just glide? Yeah. Effortlessly float is a good ring. word. Yeah, it was yeah, buoyant, the whole thing, yeah. yeah. What When you watch Chalk and Bates in person, you could see where like he'll be trying to catch up with her and it looks like work. To me, what did it look like in person? Was there a discernible labored. difference? It looked labored. Okay. And I didn't... I didn't understand what I was seeing. I didn't understand if it was because he's trying to match her. Mm -hmm. Like, because maybe, I, I don't know, there was a difficulty there. I, I'm not used to seeing him be the one who falters. Mm. Um, and Igor was not having a great day. Because mm. then I started watching Igor, and it, I thought he was going to vomit. Like, okay. he, he was pretty upset. Um, it just didn't pack it. It didn't pack a wallop. And I, I've seen her live, and I've seen her sell glitz and glam. Mm -hmm. And she, it may not be the deepest running edge, but she has something to say. Yeah. She'll, you know, but you have to give her the right thing to that's sell. That's why I don't think Imagine is what she sells. I don't think that that's her best kind Absolutely. of vehicle. I agree with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think he's ever really found a voice. His old partner seemed to be directing that ship, too. I just don't think he's... That. He can have he can have some really lovely qualities, especially mm -hmm. in his skating skills and things like that. But oh, yeah. I, unfortunately, I did not see them in this particular event. It's interesting if you go back and you watch him with Emily Samuelson and, and you notice her free leg and how wonderful it was. But there was something missing there, too. And it was in the yeah. presentation. But yeah. originally, Madison helped give him kind of like an Ina and Zimmerman where they gave each other something. Like he gave her the skating skills. She gave him the look. But it, right. it hasn't... You know, Ian and Zimmerman were a one-time world medal team, right? Like, yeah. it's a gimmick that yeah. works. Not the rule, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> so, the Weaver and Poche program, Emily Tuttle feels that this feels really dated. When I see it, the one thing that I notice is how much the sport has changed since 2012, because this was a really revolutionary program at the time, mm -hmm. and they've changed some of the music, and it's still new, and it's, it looks rough. It does not have the seamless thing that we remember it having but they don't have the training for it right um i find that you see just how the complexity and nuance of skating has improved so rapidly from 2013 obviously this was in 2012 but 2013 to now ice dance that at the top level has really pushed each other so much oh my gosh yeah this program to me really looks left in the dust Date. for some yeah yeah, yeah. But... It was interesting. I mean, obviously, we were in France. Everyone's singing along. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, everyone's singing, just swim a lot. I'm sick. And I was like, oh, God, no, I can't get sick. I was like, get away. Um, <clears throat> it They sell it, yeah. right? They were very committed. And even to she me, they're most... She loves this music. And she comes alive here in a more genuine way than she yeah, does in many of them. Yeah, really do see that. I mean, in, in even in the programs last year, which mm -hmm. I think were the biggest maybe miss for me with them. 
they still were very dedicated performers. They still gave it what they could, mm -hmm. I thought, in, in, in extension and face and all these sorts of things. I liked it, but I think I liked it because it reminded me of an old them that I used to be so excited about. Like, I really, when we saw them in Sochi, I was like, here we go. They, they here never we go. developed. But they were on the mark in Sochi. They were getting so close, too. Yeah, where and with great material, and I was, like, so looking forward to what was to come. Mm -hmm. And then this is kind of a flashback, which also lets us know how far maybe off the track they had gotten. And if they had developed this, concept more not just in the dance but in their style overall i think it will be a nice swan song when they get to the olympics when they get to nationals and they have more training time to just let this program breathe and enjoy it and enjoy the music and it'll be a yeah. nice way they've really seemed to be struggling uh ever since tess and scott came back if you look at the timeline of what has happened with them it seems like you know, they went from Canada pushing them to be the world champions to being kind of forgotten and fighting to be second. And yeah. then, you know, fighting to reignite the, their career. And it's it, it seems like it's been a, a real struggle. Charlie White made an interesting thing here. And I and obviously they showed their picture on uh, the screen. But there's there have been a lot of skaters over the years. And I thought this was an interesting comment is that he is really not a fan of skaters posting on social media in the middle of a competition to say if they've had a bad outing to to say oh. like oh we're still fighting on we had this injury we had that injury vincent zo writing pages about his, his diary entries yeah yeah about yeah. i'm gonna fight on and and it's almost like everyone's apologizing like midori ito to japan after the short program yeah but he was saying that it gets you out of that warrior mentality where you're going to come back and fight and do it because it's... You're a victim a bit to your own mistakes, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a subtle mindset shift. And yes, you do have a rib, and that is real, and that is fighting, but he says that as soon as you acknowledge it and mid-competition and apologize for the skate and then we're going to skate you know, our hearts out tomorrow, you've... you've given up in, in a certain subtle, subtle way where you have yeah. not do that. And I was like, you know, I think that there is something to it. You've taken yourself out of the competition the second you acknowledge what happened. But now somebody like Megan, mm -hmm. she posts a little differently if the skate didn't go right. She is aggressive. Like, I am going to yeah, come back to She'll be like, oh. So stupid. I can't. I haven't missed a triple toe. Blah 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 blah. But don't worry. I got this. I'm. I'm. We're good. You know. Like you know that the fire is still burning it within. Instead of this kind of languid, yeah. apology kind of situation. But I'll tell you what. Ready? I brought a horrible prop. Okay. Drew Poge, my first one. That was some hot stuff going on in that arena. So you really felt it in person with him. The, the whole oh, yeah. the I dark like, hair, oh. the tall, dark, yeah. and handsome vibe. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay, we'll call that performance. Yes. <laughs> I enjoy their free dance overall. Saying what we said about the, I enjoy it more than Imagine. I think that it has more yeah. room for growth. And and even even with the disaster in the short for them here, <clears throat> about missing the blade and all that sort of stuff, I the judges were ready to go, mm -hmm. absolutely, and have them be second. Yeah. I, I've, I don't find that they have, you know, when you see the difference between the French, how they move their knees on the ice and... And Andrew and, and Caitlin have always kind of struggled to generate the same um, ease, of, ease speed. of speed yeah. and ease yeah. of change of tempo. But they have nice edge quality. You know, mm -hmm. there is a there there. It's just they don't have the same. And you could see it a lot in the twizzles because you have to bend your knee in between each one. They don't have that same just ease over the ice that yeah. some of the top, top teams do. And that looks like work and some natural ability. And it's a little... More, but when you watch even them compared to Chalk and Bates, it's so much more. Um, the the edge has more, so much more power to it. It's interesting, right? Um, yeah, I think that they would have uh, really done better if not for that uh, mistake. Yeah, those two. Yeah, or so, that the mistake in the short. Sorry, Stepanova yeah. and Bukins, Liebestrom with um, the lyrics. Which sounds like it sounds like another song when they're doing it. Well, they because in order to and those lyrics are so hokey. Do you remember when Jewel wrote poetry? It sounds like Jewel poetry or okay. whatever. It's um. What and happened they, to Jewel? By the way, where did she go? Wasn't she oh, living she in a bus? A car. Or yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> just driving through life. Yeah. Okay. She's um, thinking about hands still. <laughs> Foolish games and Hands. this is a foolish game. Yeah, yeah. Um, they in order to fit in the lyrics, they had to alter the melody. So it, it was and the singing was very. It was another giggly moment from the arena, by the way, mm-hmm. not just like the opera queen who was like having to take a Dramamine for every like <laughs> vocal program. So um, I'm sending them to the Olympics after seeing the amount of mistakes that Nikita has had. I am like. <laughs> Throwing something against uh, uh, this was a big the the fact that they meddled here was pretty huge. I them. think they are Russia's second team. Look, they are respectable at every outing. They are. You know why I have a soft spot? They're very tall. Yes. <laughs> so they they create this. So now we got two giraffes out yeah. there watching the traveling sit spins and person. <laughs> you know, there there were some nice qualities. Sometimes the energy. A little bit from him in person it was a little off-putting. Uh, I wasn't quite rooting for them. I don't know if that was his interpretation of like dramatic. So, like Born in Kratz, when they do those sit spin twizzles, I'm like, do we have to see it in every program? Like, do we need to see the Hydra Blades in every program? Like, right. Like Scott Hamilton. Yeah, I, first I don't. Time I saw it, which was many years ago, mm-hmm. I was like flabbergasted. Yeah. I was like, amazing. And then it's like, okay, here's where they put that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like the cantilever for... It's like, you know Judy Garland's going to sing Over the Rainbow, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. It's, it's going to happen. Somewhere... You don't know if she's going to do it in, but she's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, yeah, that that was a big step for them to be bronze here, I think. It's like, wait for it. Michelle is going to do the smiral. Wait for it. It's coming. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, and a change of edge. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, you saw the French in person. Is this your first time seeing them live? Did you know it is? And I was a little, I was a little afraid. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, all the following compliments have nothing to do with Virtue and Moyer, mm-hmm. but everything to do with a performance I saw. Mm-hmm. I was nervous because I was, I thought they might be the kind that were slow or small or something in person, and I was going to be, no, no, sure wasn't the case. I was, I mean, I was ready to like it. They mm-hmm. made uh, the adjustments they made to the free. They toned some stuff back. Mm-hmm. It's better. There's no story. There's no ice dance, you know, relationship arc. Mm-hmm. And that's all right. It's just very, just some very pretty skating. Um, I know that there were, like, I you see, like, he missed the hand, you know, a couple of times. And a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, these things. And the ending... I feel like they have, I almost wonder if they're like saving it or something, but there is, there is a more epic ending. Is Marie uh, Franck okay. struggling with the endings this season? Is that her downfall? You know, they used to say in gymnastics that Valeria Liukin was so wonderful, but he couldn't teach the bar dismount. Marie Franck has seemed to struggle with the ending of Tessa and Scott's. Um, yeah. And then this one yeah. this year. It's just a, because it opens so well, but, well, both of them. But it's not no, ending not, on a tonic, Jonathan. It's not. not. But they, they got the openings down mm-hmm. over there. But the ending, yeah, it needs just a little something. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, I feel the opposite way about Hubble and Donahue. I think the beginning needs a little something. But um, the it lasted for me about 10 seconds, mm-hmm. the whole program. It is um, like that. It's like a dream. It is over so quickly. And, and here's what I'll say, because I know... and. Um, People are 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 drawing attention to where they are lacking technically, um, and where the errors happen. And I understand that, and I understand that it should be judged. And mm-hmm. absolutely, as an artist, as a performing artist, mm-hmm. the point of a vocal technique mm-hmm. is to serve the interpretation. Thank you, Dick, for this beautiful yeah. words. <laughs> I mean, I mean, this is like my life, like mm-hmm. motto. So, okay, you can do a day crescendo. Mm-hmm for you the only reason you learn how to do a day crescendo in your voice is that you can deliver it in a powerful moment and that by doing that you bring the music off the page and create a moment mm-hmm. right yes or if you're having problems with the day crescendo sometimes they just turn up stage a little trick mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm just like ah, ah yeah okay um so to me i was moved mm will say this is a sport that yes it is a sport it mm-hmm. absolutely is a sport um 
but I'm not saying I was moved athletically. I was moved artistically. So I, you, one has to give them uh, that moment. And it, yeah, it packed a wallop. I mean, so because Tess and Scott are doing a tango for the beginning, even though it's a movie, you know, right. uh, cheesified tango, it's an oppositional movement. You're, you, you know, tango is your more complex, right? But it is an oppositional movement. So you're not floating over the ice. You're kind of fighting each other and moving and creating a drama between you two. But mm-hmm. the one thing that the French do in all of their free dances for the last four years is that they kind of move the same way they do do the same they do skate in both directions but they're always doing the same doing direction with each other yeah. and mm-hmm. it just they just create this effect on the ice when they go around right they're also really smart with the marketing and i know everyone's going to say it's dda and but dda remember he invented all of that um bs to make surya sound so exotic which they, they then later claimed was that racist. Backfire. yeah he's yeah. not actually so good at it. <laughs> yeah. well but it did make her memorable that she was eating a diet right. of seeds and hadn't gotten right. her hair cut and was like a mountain right. gnome princess right <laughs> so a they favorite. did something so smart because the problem with the skating media and why you make someone like Corey uncomfortable is because there are two sides of the skating media. There are the people who are within skating who write that are so sanitized that they can't actually say anything that they are right. just, it's all puff piece because it's the way. Like, like controlled. Ice Network articles almost have to be. Yes. Right. Yeah. Then the people that cover multiple sports don't know skating is supposed to be dumbed down in its analysis. Yeah. Right. And they, they also maybe don't know tech, you know, they're not writing about the edges, but they're writing about the big picture. So you can okay. always attack that person and say, well, you don't know what you're talking about. Or, yeah. So there's a weird thing in the middle there. Um, and I forgot where I was going with this, Jonathan. I was, um, sorry. Oh, you were talking about the multi, oh, you were talking about their branding. That was so yes. good. And sorry. you think it's, so the media is glib on both sides. And that way, <laughs> that's what I was trying to say is because, notice that they worked with um, Christopher Dean for the short dance. Now, he's not working with them every day. And Marie France is a choreographer who is very headstrong. And probably when you get a program, one choreographer for another, um, changes inevitably happen. And of course. the original voice tends to be altered and as it does. But that was a real branding moment for them. Uh, that was a real strategy. Because I'm going to tell you that when the mainstream media gets a hold of this and gets their talking points for their articles. It'll say Christopher Dean, yeah. It will, none of that. It was that Guillaume is considered such a talent, right? He's considered such a uh, unique uh, voice of talent in the sport, such a unique skill set. It is, the article is going to say, from one legend to another. The yeah. fact that Christopher Dean did that short program, and who knows how much input he is having, but the fact that they have his name on it Every glib article is going to be comparing the two of them as revolutionary right. visionaries. The second right. you see an article that starts to link that connection, I would just like you to send it to me. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting <laughs> and for it. I told it. so at gmail.com. Yeah. Right? Like, right when like the New York Times and BuzzFeed and Vox and everyone starts to connect this. When the we non-skating outlets. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When that connection is made, that, oh my God, we've never seen skaters like this since Tor Valadina. I'm just telling you, I think it was intentional. Yeah. Because yeah. we, I, I think it was, as much as maybe they think he's an artistic um, genius, I don't think that they necessarily just took him for the Ed Sheeran. I think this is a branding moment. And right. it was genius. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would have been interested to see the short live also, obviously, because mm-hmm. that's uh, where they're much more vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But, and then I was talking to Phil Hirsch about this also, because um, he did... Some people aren't caring for the transition into the spin. Right. The I listen. I wa- I read this thing that you two were talking about back and forth, where you were just loving each other's musical knowledge back and forth, and oh, well, you're so brilliant, Phil. Oh, well, you're so brilliant, Jonathan. Well, I find that their arms that? are very. It's like making interesting points, but because it was it was someone who knows music to yes. someone else who knows music, and I. But I I really think the spin is quite a fact. He was saying he thought it didn't go. Mm-hmm. But, but their my, hands did. Yeah, or, yes, but not the feet. And I was like, but that within a piano part, it, there's voicing. This finger is bringing out this thing. These ones are creating a flurry of activity. This one's got the bass. And they are matching every single one of those parts. This is what I'm responding to, and I'm owning that. The reason 
the reason it's shared mm -hmm. 30 million times or whatever that Eurosport thing from their last Grand Prix, you know, has circled, um, it's because of this kind of attention. So musicians are clued into that exactly. The feet are following what's happening in the baseline, and the hands are following what's happening in the treble club, and the flurry of the middle is the actual rotation itself. Like, it, it's pretty next level stuff, so I enjoy it. Now, the, the recording is too fast. It is, it is a very... It's not my favorite rotation. I think you're both right. I have yeah. to say. I think you and yep. Phil are both right on this. I prefer last season's free dance. Overall, I would just say that I thought it had more of a voice and that it said something. And it was... For me, it was their first Mozart. Yeah. I liked so much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, th I think they're wonderful. And I think that they will... I think the general public will love them and be mesmerized. Um, yeah. Mesmerized is a good word. That's what I felt just watching it. You know, like sometimes you just like something, so you sit back. You know, I was texting people, I was taking notes, I was like trying to put stuff on Twitter, and then all of a sudden they just started and I just sat back. I find that Moulin Rouge, maybe because it's two different pieces of music and something about it, you never just sit back, you watch intently and you appreciate, yeah. but it's not one like, I feel like when the French go, it just time just, uh, time just goes by. I don't know if that's good or bad. It's just a different kind of quality. When Tess and Scott, mm. I'm appreciating and I'm looking and I'm interested and I'm engaged. When yeah. the French go, it's like an easy to digest and it's just too different. And, and we're going to talk about this with Shoma and Javier also. Right. The What I anticipate. Now, I've not seen the Tessa and Scott Moulin Rouge mm -hmm. live. I know it is excellent. I know it is wonderful. I'm sure it's just absolutely wonderful live. I, I get a sense that they are performing. Yes. That they are sending out energy. And the French, you lean in. Yeah. I even just said I leaned back, but you know what I'm saying. They 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 make you come to them. You appreciate them. Tessa yeah. and Scott are performing to you. The yeah. French are performing and you are appreciating. Yeah. Well, Johnny said something where it was like you were spying on them or something like that. But it really does I'm pulled in. Mm -hmm. And and it's a different feeling. I found Which is that how way. he skated. He skated yeah. where he was going to do his thing. And you are going to choose to love it or to not. And that is how the French kind of, they do their yeah. thing. Especially yeah. in that free dance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the men. I have found men skating really hard to watch the last couple of years. Uh, because when the jumping elements are changing and the programs become less and it becomes a real crapshoot on whether or not they're going to land the jumps, I find that unnerving to watch and it's not an enjoyable thing experience yeah i would rather watch patrick chan do his four continents long from 2016 where it was just a wonderful thing and you felt like he could handle the content that he was doing that they could handle the content it wasn't such a gamble yeah i don't like to feel like your crazy alcoholic coach is like you know uh like terrifying you into performing something or going right. for something that you're on the edge of your seat. And as much as I love Shoma Uno, I don't trust him when he does these jumps. It's too much. It's a bit beyond at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and it was unnerving to watch. You know, I'm a big fan of Shoma. Mm -hmm. When they come up, I hate By the way, I'm not calling Shoma's coach an alcoholic. I'm saying in general, there is that stereotype of a coach pushing you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're good. Okay. Yeah. Um, when I don't like that they have to do that announcement of the skaters mm. they're they're like racehorses in the stable like they're so antsy to it was get cute going. the first time for the final and it it's too much it took, yeah it, because you you sense the skaters are uneasy and when he first came out for that he looked outrageously stiff like when he got on the ice it was like an old man that couldn't bend his knees or something and i was like um is he injured what's happening and it took him that long to kind of like loosen it all up. I was very confused. I was I was nervous for him at first, also because because of the stiff legs in that opening parts of the warm up. I was very baffled by it. But um, but again, even from the opening, I, I'm not as big a fan of the turn dot mm -hmm. as I am of the short or other things he's done in the past. But you are pulled in. Mm -hmm. I was pulled in. But the jumps, it's to the loop was beautiful. Yes. Um, or from where I was sitting, mm -hmm. but. Um, and he has gravitas that really that really works in person. But um, yeah, in general, I don't like to be nervous, mm -hmm. and I feel very nervous when he skates. 
sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. You know, when he skates and it's it's so he adds the jumps. It's certainly like that. I felt that the ranking was correct of uh, Javier and Shoma in between the short and the long with the lead and everything. I felt that the judging has become ridiculous to me. When you see someone fall twice and have step outs and have pops and trips and this, and they are still getting 92 points. Now, yeah. Javier is a wonderful skater. Shoma is a wonderful skater, and you have to award, reward them for that. But on this day, to say that they are averaging over nines on the components because yeah. they are, when they have this many mistakes that really detract from an overall performance, I find it just negates everything and makes it a joke. It makes it means that that mark was set, that we are right. always going to give him that, and maybe we're going to give him slightly higher, but that it's within a corridor, and it tells you that they are always going... There's, It's very hard to move up in skating, is what it's saying, and it's not reflective of necessarily uh, the day. And it, it seems weird when you have to give points because they're always wonderful, yet... This was a 5-7 performance, or a 5-6. It was not the 6-0. It was not the 5-0. And it still would have been in the lead. Yeah. yeah. And I also don't understand the chasing of these enormous scores. Well, it just, yeah. they feel fake to me. Uh, yeah. From time to time. And yeah. um, I still don't love Javier Fernandez's free skate. I know people, David Wilson said, well, it's so international. And it's, um, you know, and it's supposed to be for his home country. And I get it. I find it... Yeah, I get the concept, you know, um, but like Don Quixote, but like Man of La Mancha, it's like, well, that's, come on, it's not like that's a Spanish. But that's even a hokey character itself, Man of La Mancha. Yeah, because an, the... old, an old character, a and delusional it... character, a yeah. sad character in many ways, like, I don't even know. Even that is sticky because the Man of La Mancha is like having dementia. So, yeah. I, uh... yeah. It's, it's a strange it, one to me. I felt Guys and Dolls was much better. And I know I that, that was for the American, and maybe I'm just American, but I don't know. I, well, I, it captured a performance quality that this one doesn't necessarily do. I still, for me, the it's the moment with the hands on the hips, the superhero, like, hands on the hips before the first triple axel that I'm just like, I just don't understand what this program is. Because, like, something about that reads as funny to me. If he did that exact same move at that exact same time, but in the... Um, the Hello Dolly program, not Hello Dolly, Guys and Dolls program, we would have all giggled. Yeah. But I was like, but we're not giggling, or I don't understand what's happening. So he has a, like, he's like the love child of Orser and Browning with his ability to relate to an audience and mm -hmm. have footwork. But I find that they make him, they, they go to the cheesier, lower common denominator aspect, where even if he redid Kurt's Casablanca, I think that would be an interesting... Because uh, he could do it now. And there was a yeah. time when he probably couldn't have done it. Yeah. And then he had to go stickier in the beginning. But he he's capable of more now. But it he is does have such a wonderful relationship with the audience. It's very yeah. similar uh, when you were talking about Tess and Scott versus the French. Like, he, again, is performing to you. Shoma is oh. performing. And you are appreciating. And I felt that that yeah. was interesting. Um, yeah. Interesting that he had a much... He had a fantastic short program here. And the free has still been an error. And Brian was here this time, and but he does look far improved from earlier in the season. But right, the last Olympic, which season, is also something that uh, happens with Javi sometimes. Yeah. The last Olympic season was a, a tough one for him. So I'm I'm wondering if this is an Olympic thing. Is it just this season being so important? Is it going to take him a little while? I, I have right. PS5 by Europeans. We will start to see him be into form, but okay. it'll be interesting to see if going simpler. Has, is a strategy that he will buy into and have confidence for and see that he can win not doing all of the jumps and feel good about that or whether seeing the other quad flips makes him not insecure but you know questioning a little bit but they're often dicey ones the the GOEs especially on those of those that are doing them are not always consistent and man when he hits those quads mm -hmm. hobbies are some of the most beautiful yes. like his position in the air is so wonderful as well. Yeah. He gets that so low on his knee but when he lands. But um, I, I think he's going to get big GOE. Mm -hmm. And you again, something about that charisma, that that charming quality he has, mm -hmm. makes you give more points mm -hmm. without even, what, justified or not. He's it's magic. Just, okay, it is just... Yeah, his um, Kelka shows. Or he's a wonderful a... star. He's a star of the sport, okay? But he, he, he like, really is, and that, it's infectious, and that can't help but, but play into all those marks. I don't know. Well, Peggy said that 
Skating is a very revealing sport, so I guess he's just a wonderful person. Okay. Right. Uh, well, but I but I, I feel like yeah, you see yeah. what you get. Yes. Or what oh, you get what you see. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was just imitating Peggy's. Um, <laughs> yeah. When in, when in Grenoble. <laughs> yes. So the men of Tom Z, mm -hmm. when you see it in person, the all jumps and the no. Um... Vincent, was, Vincent was sad to me. Uh, clearly Vincent was sad to all of social media then. Um, it, though it was tough. That was a tough one to watch. And like, why you know, do you pick... Tessa and Scott's Come What May music after you already know they were using it because remember he had another program first that Charlie White did he's the 17th skater to use Moulin Rouge and when you are right. Vincent and you are not known for your artistry you're going to pick the same song that everyone else is already doing this year I, it, to me right. it, yeah we, we literally saw him two in a row in the in the men's vet um, it just but again anything could be playing so it doesn't like <laughs> doesn't really matter too much um i'm curious what happens now so all this talk about an injury and you know all this i worry i worry about him potentially so becoming he's had a career of injuries i think that's interesting is that when he was with tammy he was injured and the mom tried to get him lessons with frank and then frank found out he wasn't really supposed to be skating because they checked with tammy then he went to yuka and he wasn't supposed to be jumping and of course they obviously are always keeping tabs on what uh Nathan Chen is doing, and then the mom switched coaches to Tom Z because Tom Z would work with him on the jumps. Uh, I don't know if Vincent can stay healthy long term. That's yeah. that's the big question for me is if there is a big, because it looks like the content is too difficult for what he's able to execute in a free skate at this time. Yeah, it doesn't look consistent. Now, I am more conservative that I think you should be doing clean programs and learning to compete and learning how to execute with quality and right. adding it in and you know, there's a different the programs I feel like different every time we see it. Anyway, you know what I mean? Like he just adapts and does whatever he wants. It's just very sloppy, uh uninspired uh, to be yeah. the way I was forgettable. Um and, and they kept introducing him as Vincent. And I was like, I'm going to guess that's not how you say his name. <laughs> Did you um, see a difference between him and Max? What? Yes, I was more comfortable watching Max. Even my, with all of his Maxness. Even with all his Maxness. In it's like a level of Elvis Stoico ness, but Max is his own brand of ness when he skates. Like yeah, the shoulder on the on the sow cow and the uh. yeah, it, you know. Again, it's not a skater skater, <laughs> um, but. I preferred it kind of a lot to Vincent. There's a even, power to it. It's it's um. There's a power to it. It's yeah. exciting in a blue collar monster truck kind of way when Max goes to perform. I do think I didn't mean what I said. I think he's well dressed. <laughs> I know it like looks like he's not showing up, but like in a sea of like, oh my gosh, you guys, what are you doing? I I appreciate it. I uh, can't picture Max in any of those costumes with the sequins and the. <laughs> I just can't. No, but I don't want to almost picture most people in them, but um. Except for Adam, uh, because that oh, that yeah. shirt needs to stay. That is just so much, but it's. Sure. I'm kidding. The Adam costume for last week is just so oh, oh, uniquely yes, Adam. Is, never change. Never that, change. That. that is sure not something that Max will be wearing. Yes. Um, and the jumps, They. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He could have made a big move here and didn't. Mm -hmm. I still see who we... I, I still think the three are Jason and Nathan. It's pretty clear. And I, I think they are going. Yeah. Why did you think of Misha Gee? Oh, skating to Thais, which is happening right now at the Met. Go check it out with my friend Eileen <laughs> singing Thais. Or as we say, thighs. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was beautiful. It had a, um, a nostalgic quality to it. But no, he's one that doesn't go for more than... He doesn't bite off more than he can chew, and I appreciate about him, and I think that it creates a moment where you enjoy watching him skating every time. It got him a bronze. Yeah. Or not, because they weren't giving out medals here. What were they giving out, like, plastic souvenir stars or something Look, like that? It is time that France sunsets uh, this competition if they can't get a sponsor. And it's funny is that it's always been the event that is said to be organized uh, poorly with the practice times and everything. The skaters mm. have never enjoyed the actual organization, but they love being in Paris and they love the trophy in, in the past. Yeah. So it's always been a bit of a mishmash. Uh, yeah. Yeah, them. it's certainly not La Ligue trophies anymore. Like, it's a... <laughs> 
plastic. It will star. always be La Ligue to me. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Some people are still calling it um, Eric Pompard. Eric Pompard. Pompard. But that's. But, okay. It's just. They haven't. It's not been for two years. So. Okay. okay. Now the pairs. Um, but he, he did it, Misha. It was nice to see. You know, when I had seen him in person before, mm -hmm. it was um, rather slow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel it was as slow as I remembered, which was nice. Um, oh, the, come on, the short program when he was skating to Ave Maria and he was dressed as Jesus with sequins blood coming down his body. I was like, I don't, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Figure skating is a unique sport, Jonathan. Yeah, bloody okay. hell. I was the like, fact that I you would have sequin blood is, is yeah. a unique choice. It was, it was a statement. It was much. And but, he is and now then, becoming an artistic voice in the sport as he becomes a choreographer. So I think right. he will live on in our hearts for many years and, and touch us yeah. in a myriad of ways. Well, so, and also, like, no one believed he was retiring last year, right? Like, I never understood this, like... He was injured, and he's been injured, but this person okay. loves the camera so yeah. much. He is so uniquely suited for this sport that I yeah. never thought that he would give yeah. up a year before the Olympics when he would have the moment to perform one more time. So, as we move on to the pairs, I, okay, <laughs> Zoe Jones in person, tell me about Zoe. She's got the back tattoo, she's 45. Yeah, she was, she was proud of it. Like, it was just on display. Um... More power to you. Good for you. Go, girl. Good for you. Um, yeah. I, I really, I, <laughs> I don't know the motivation, you know? I don't know what the partner must be thinking also of the current situation there. Um, Tracy was funny. Tracy Wilson was commentating about how, you know, they competed at the Neville Horn and they didn't earn a spot. And I was thinking, you don't say, Tracy, you don't say. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, that was, I was unsure of the motivation there. Um, by the way, okay. when you watch on the Olympic Channel, you're really missing this, but there's a, a commercial that they play. It beats the awkwardness of the Sarah McLaughlin with the animals commercial. They now offer you a $5,000 um, cash advance. Comp there is a cash advance commercial for $5,000 where there are like pop stars singing and weird things happening. It really... it Like, how does this relate? It's yeah, oddly okay. appropriate for skating being on Channel uh, 1,272, which it is on Comcast <laughs> Xfinity for me. It feels very appropriate uh, for something. Yeah, that's, that's unusual. Uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, overall, Marissa and Mervyn, woman of the land, son. She looked exquisite. Yes. She, her dress was just stunning he had like sparkly jeremy abbott realness going on um it's too bad i mean what can you say you know what can you say the throw triple flip is really come along i it yeah. used to be faked then. they have really lovely qualities but it's i feel like i'm seeing the same potential in every performance a little bit so a little bit it's tough go they they could have done something but, did, how many triples did you predict they would do? Well, after our debacle last week, zero. Same here. Yeah, and uh, I'm sad that we were right, but we were right. So, right. too bad. Same for Luba and Dylan, by the way, is what I went yeah. with. Yeah. Them in person. So he has a problem with his arm. You know where, I don't know if you've, we've talked about where it, it doesn't stretch. can't get stretch. it up. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, do you notice that they do lift positions where she drapes around his arm so that you cannot see that his elbow is slightly bent. But is that does he have a, a an like a a hypo extension problem? Yes, there's know. something with the elbow in it. Not okay. Yeah, because I mean, her lift positions. You're right. You're absolutely not looking at him to see those in person. I was like, dear lord. I was like, oh my gosh. And they did their final lift. Are you? Kidding? They did like 25 laps around the arena. I hope I we mean, have Jenny and Todd pro career where they do lovely uh, programs where they never jump, as you would appreciate yeah. Mino and Sam. It was a very Underhill and Martini program, this. Yeah. Um, she was off and under, and I needed a Martini. <laughs> it's kind of like, I don't know. <laughs> um, Jonathan, you're disgusting, okay? <laughs> no worries. Here, here's something. He looks hot in person. 
she um, looks stunning. So she's yeah, she's exquisite. Um, and bless them for like having to wait on the ice for three hundred hours while they like manually like used an abacus to <laughs> score the Italians during the short program. When I was catching up on YouTube for the short program and I went to look up the Italians, I was like, why is this clip sixteen something minutes long? Like it, they must be showing part of it. And then I. Then, of course, the computer error. And Luba and Dylan were just good sports and just kind of like filled the time and did their thing. And yeah. The one thing I really like about their program is he has kind of like a meathead quality to him where he seems like he was in a frat, right? There's that, yeah. there's that qual. But Sandra, with this choreography and David, they make him into like a man. You know, like when he threw. They battle it just right. It's a program better suited to him than perhaps her. Yeah. I think it's funny. My favorite movie, it kind of cracks me up and I kind of love it. When he throws her and then he does a little pivot on the ice and he does a turn and it's like. And it's just so funny. He's committed. He's committed. Yeah, yeah. he's like, I'm doing this. Yeah. <laughs> This, it, you know, that, that was smart packaging on Sandra's part. They are such opposites in such a strange way, but it kind of works. Yeah. It's um, yeah, she knew just what to do there. Yeah, that, I love it. Yeah. Um, oh dear. So the the Candyman program, Jonathan, Nina Moser, tell us the full experience. Oh, okay, so this person. was fun. So because of the seats, it was like anything goes. Mm -hmm. I was sitting like right behind the camera pit where the coaches basically were watching. Mm -hmm. And Nina, I, she had to have chosen the music. She tapped her, she was bouncing back and forth. She knew every lyric, even the obscene ones that were blurted out with a trumpet. Um, she was just in it to win it. And I was like, well, I'm glad you're having a good time, Nina. <laughs> I find it awkward. It is. It is. That's why you feel that way. <laughs> because they don't seem peppy like that. That doesn't seem them. It seems, it seems put on. And I'm a big fan. Well, I'm a big fan of their skating. They have lovely now, qualities to them. The rock quality. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know that this particular style, um, in the short program, The Rock, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you know... I want them to do something classical, but that's also a mismatch. Mm -hmm. I, I don't see them as red. I see them as blue. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want a more Gordieva Grinkov. I don't want a Mishichana Dmitriev. They really are Shishkova and Naumov to me, pushing them I, center yes, stage. Yes, yes. Yeah. So just like swoop, that like backward somersault. Maybe they need to skate to like that Vussel and Stoyer music that they skated to in 97 and 98 with that like kind of faux piano. Uh, what That's what that they need. Mean? Yeah, I think that would suit them really. And the twist is pretty, pretty spectacular in person. Yeah, on um, the words, make your panties drop or whatever. It is. So you got to see your crush, Morgan Cipres, in person. <laughs> um, yeah, you pick Here's... him every week. By the way, I um, know. Well, that one because I confused everyone the other week by choosing Andres. I was like, I'll give them what they know. I'll give them what they know. <laughs> and Law's best dress was. Gabby. Gabby, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was most looking forward to the dance, people. Don't you know me? They people that pick ladies. I'm like, what am I, a basic late. bitch? Come on. Like, I, I knew it because I, I do it too early, and then inevitably I miss the like people that withdraw. But when it first went up, it said, which dance is Steve most looking forward to seeing? Obviously, I, I was thinking that. Yeah. Dance is on the brain. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know what? It's... There are people that are more refined, mm -hmm. and there are people that um, have better individual elements, obviously. But it's it's that it's that feeling of being genuine and being honest. They are honest performers, mm -hmm. and it changes the mood entirely. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm with them, and I I suddenly want and their even their style on a lot of their elements. It's uniquely their own. Could someone else maybe do it with more finesse? Maybe, but no one else is doing it. So I, I don't know. It's kind of unique and and honest. Whereas what we're talking about, exquisite but forced, it doesn't it works have the same. Them. The music is appropriate. It's current. They're a current team. They're not a classical team. So the Olympic Channel kept throwing inadvertent shade their way. And I don't even... It was the, the Vern Lundquist figure... He kept calling them single skaters who have teamed up in pairs. Now, they've skated together for a long time. She was also a pair Absolutely. skater 
for many times before. She had another partner uh, before this one. She hasn't done singles since she competed against La at Wissahickon, by the way. It's been a long time since she was a single skater, but they kept referring to them as single skaters, which is what Tarasova will refer to do Hamill and Radford as, or what people okay. will call Crystal and Rudy. Like That's like the pair skating shade is when you call someone a single skater. Right. Uh, it was they were trying to be nice but their connection I, i'm sorry because the connection is real yeah they just don't they're not matched in the always with the yeah. positions in but they do have a, they, they're starting to have their own voice and it's working for them more and she's got a mohawk and a body to kill and he's attractive and it makes you root for them because they stand out in this absurd sport they stand yeah. out in their own way, and it, they're right. a little edgy, and you kind of kind of goes, kind of works. And you know, refreshing. you never know what you're going to get with that quad style. She took some tough tumbles in the warm up, but you I know, I like that she's a tough girl. She's a she's, yeah, yeah. So there, it's, again, it's about. It's, I was just the reason I'm talking so much about energy now mm-hmm. is because I was there, mm-hmm. and you know, what else is there? The judges, <laughs> like that's mm-hmm. informing PCS. They're not going back and watching in slow motion mm-hmm. three hundred times weeks after the competition and then suddenly deciding something it's a gut reaction Mm -hmm. and and they give you a good one so after with the russian errors i didn't know Mm. actually Hmm. how how close it could have been but now what did you think of mateo in person okay this is for sure i'm just gonna have to fan for like 25 minutes have you seen all of his programs all of his photos that are on uh yeah, I mean, to see it live was something. <laughs> and I was right in front of where he was stretching, so I did post a rather interesting photo on Twitter. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, you're disgusting. Okay. I'm worse, despicable, or I don't know, insert a horrible adjective here. Um, but their look is unique. Mm. Okay. It's, you know, they have the unitards, and it's she looks great. It's very 70s, very roller skating meets the ice. It's It owns that roller skating quality. Now, he, they've, they've grown. They've come on. I mean, it's been long enough. It's That's like the Olympic Channel guy still calling them single skaters. Like, no, you, but I'm she, saying that costume looks, like looks very roller skating. If you've seen roller skating costumes that people wear. Uh, there's a vibe. They have their own style. It's not... I don't think it's the where they'll end up. They they could use some different music in both in both. I prefer programs. them to the other Italians to uh, Marque and Hotaric because they've never been able to really utilize Valentina's drama and her performance in an effective program on the ice. Mm-hmm. It's never yeah. been up to what she can deliver, and they've never had the right vehicle. Uh, for them and there's a power to that you know like when you were saying you saw megan and eric live in boston and you were like on television you may not understand it as artistic but seeing that sheer force of power and like big elements completed Mm -hmm. creates creates an energy and a style and they kind of had that i mean obviously there were errors but they they really moved pretty solidly it was kind of nice I, i enjoyed them much more than i anticipated yeah Are there any pairs we're leaving out that you would like to discuss about generic loveliness? Oh, Peng and Jin. What did you think of the Butterfly Lovers? It's very beautiful. Um, I had a heart attack. That throw, like, the almost botched throw was right in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, Where I was like, are they going to omit this? And I was like, absolutely not. (laughs) They don't know how. They're just going to make it work. And they were at such an angle that I literally thought she was going to land in my arms. I was Mm -hmm. like, I'm here, I got (laughs) you. And then she just like maneuvered that around. Again, I thought this Grand Prix might go better for them. Mm -hmm. I I anticipated them. I I put them third here in in what I thought the results were going to be because I was feeling generous towards them. But there's some really lovely qualities. So overall, what was your moment of the week? Uh, Mateo, no questions. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I have to say mine was that I was eating dinner and, you know, I've been around and skating for a lot of times. So I have a lot of um, stories and opinions that I could share with you about different people. And um, I was eating dinner and it's like, my phone starts blowing up and I'm like, <laughs> Jonathan Byer just said it. Oh <laughs> my goodness. He just said it. I do. I do regret that. <laughs> no, Jonathan, you... I should have just been cla- <laughs> like Jonathan. I need to look inward and not outward and they need to look outward right now and I just needed to just 
say that that's okay. It's because someone tried to attack me the recently, and I was like, "Good luck soon." And yeah. but there are times that you want to say something, but I was yeah. like, "Wow, you go, girl. You are like." Strong woman. I was like, yes, okay. You are full of sand. <laughs> How mindful are you these days? You must be, you need mindfulness for intermediate advanced. <laughs> That's what you need now. I'm doing my yoga again. So I think you should start doing yoga too, Jonathan. Maybe you could give me some scales so I could start warming up. Because I want to sing that woman on the land. That to me is the song of the season. Okay, so, great. Yeah, give me some scales to do. Voice coaching. I will vocalize. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about Pagliacci today, but Bichanko didn't do that great, so we're, we're fine. Ooh. We'll talk about another opera we'll next time. We'll talk about Pagliacci another time. So, yeah. all right. Well, as always, we want to remind you to hold an edge, have love for daddy, and look sexy. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>